Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seamland and in this video we're going to talk about what are the best ways to uh, boost your testosterone levels. So we're going to be ranking different kinds of activities, supplements and foods uh, for raising your testosterone levels. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! Alright, so let's get straight into it. Uh, so we have the tiers here and the activities. So we're just going to begin from like randomness. Um, first off, let's take obesity. So uh, being overweight that's actually um, has been shown to be uh, associated with lower testosterone levels and it uh, does impair your uh, hormone production for both males and women. Uh, especially for men, the uh, excess body fat, uh, basically your fat cells basically have like, this um, enzyme called aromatase that uh, converts your testosterone into uh, estrogen. So uh, that's why the more body fat you have, the kind of lower testosterone levels are going to be and the higher your estrogen levels are going to be. So uh, that's uh, obviously huge, <laughs> very bad. So I got to put this into the shit here. <laughs> so if you're overweight, then the first thing you need to do or the most biggest effect, one of the biggest effects you will have on your testosterone levels is going to be just, um, you know, obviously just losing weight. And uh, that's going to be the best uh, thing to do that uh, for that. So, uh, yeah, you don't even need to take like some magic supplements. You usually just need to kind of lose some body fat and uh, that will do the trick in most cases. Uh, next, we'll pick up um, something else from this list. Okay, oysters. <laughs> so oysters are actually a good food for testosterone production because they contain uh, a lot of zinc. So zinc is one of the uh, essential nutrients for producing testosterone, other hormones as well, and uh, especially for uh, sperm sperm count, uh, spermatogenesis. Um, that's been also been um, linked to not only zinc. But also actually the oysters specifically, just so just eating the oysters themselves uh, has been found to have a positive effect on spermatogenesis and the zinc obviously will also then have a positive effect on uh, the testosterone levels. So I think this is going to be a good uh, thing to do because, you know, nutrition is still one of the uh, most effective ways of regulating your biomarkers and uh, yeah, your diet does directly have an effect on um, your body composition as well as the uh, sex hormone uh, production. Next up, we'll take uh, cardio. So cardiovascular exercise, obviously it can be a good, for, good, for, good thing for losing weight and in so doing helping with testosterone production. Uh, but as an exercise itself, uh, cardio doesn't raise testosterone at all. Uh, so uh, the hit, hit uh, cardio, like high intensity interval training, uh, that could have this effect. But regular low intensity cardio doesn't really um, raise your testosterone at all. So you don't get any uh, testosterone boosting response from that. Uh, but I'm still going to put it into like... Um, Oh, and you can already over you can also overdo the cardio like excess cortisol uh, will impair testosterone levels and uh, testosterone production and uh, can make you stressed out but it still has a positive effect on your body composition by making you burn calories and losing uh, weight so I'll just put it into like okay uh, just because of that as an exercise itself is um, no effect on testosterone production at least that is what I uh, think and uh, then uh, the circadian rhythms, or let's, this is uh, more linked to yeah, like the vitamin D. Uh, so sunlight exposure and vitamin D is huge for uh, your testosterone levels. And uh, low vitamin D status is associated with lower testosterone levels. And uh, optimally, you would want to have you know sli slightly higher end of the vitamin D to uh, have a good uh, sex hormone profile. So that's why I'll put it also here into uh, good, so to say. Like yeah, you want to have vitamin D, and you also want to get exposed to sunlight. Specifically, so there's even studies where the sunlight exposure on the testicles uh, raises testosterone levels almost like double more than if you get sun exposure on your just just the regular skin. So uh, sunlighting your balls is um, it has been shown to raise testosterone levels. Uh, so yeah, vitamin D plus the sunlight itself has a positive effect on on that. I was tripping balls. Actually, I'll put it into here, gut here, because the vitamin D is so kind of crucial. Uh, for that, and I'll actually put uh, zinc here as well, gut here, <laughs> because there are literally, yeah, one of the most kind of fundamentals, uh, vitamin D and zinc uh, for um, testosterone uh, levels. Uh, dun, 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 let's move on with, uh, this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, then this is going to be ginseng, so uh, this um, ancient herb that uh, is usually associated with uh, sex hormones and libido and uh, cardiovascular health so actually, yeah, ginseng have been found to also yeah, raise uh, testosterone levels in studies. Uh, the effect isn't like uh, significantly huge, uh, but it's still there that it does. The uh, kind of folk medicine is uh, true in this case that it is uh, good for libido as well as uh, testosterone levels. And it is definitely better than cardio for that. <laughs> so I'll put uh, this um, 
I'll put this into good, yeah, because uh, it uh, does work in uh, small amounts in m minor effects. Next up is gonna be uh, stress. So um, stress, obviously I mentioned that excess stress can be bad for the testosterone levels and too much working and um, over, 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 like uh, overstressed chronic stress, cor chronic cortisol, uh, that will have a negative effect on your testosterone levels as well. Um, I think that, yeah, it's probably like, you know, so it has a huge negative effect on your testosterone levels, but I don't think that it's as bad as being overweight. Uh, so you can still be uh, somewhat sympathetically overdriven and still have high testosterone levels. So uh, yeah, cortisol isn't nearly as bad as being overweight, I think. And uh, in some sense, like the cortisol you get from like exercise, you know, it's still raises cortisol and it, but it doesn't have long-term effects on uh, your testosterone whereas like you know exercise does like a net positive is still going to be there for the testosterone and I think that applies to just chronic stress as well that even if you are experiencing slightly higher amounts of stress it's uh, still not as like shit there <laughs> it's still bad but it's not that uh, sh complete uh, shit there uh, boron so boron essential mi not an essential mineral but uh, conditionally essential and uh, that is also um, associated with high testosterone by reducing this uh, sex hormone binding globulin uh, that kind of uh, frees up testosterone a little bit more. So uh, this, I think, um, would also be good. Uh, so uh, most people aren't getting uh, adequate amounts of boron. It's a huge uh, deficiency. Uh, and just because it's not considered an essential nutrient, then it's not like made that big of a deal. <laughs> but it is uh, quite important. And I do think that it's an uh, uh, effective way to kind of have a minor effect on your testosterone levels. Let's move on with... Uh, Soybeans, <laughs> so uh, soybeans uh, obviously have are slightly more estrogenic. They're xenoestrogens. They mimic estrogen in your body. Um, I'll put it into bad because um, it will potentially raise your estrogen levels if you're male. Uh, but it's again not as bad as just being overweight. Like some, uh, if you're just you know still working out and eating clean and uh, staying healthy, then you're testosterone levels may, shouldn't be like very affected by eating soybeans unless you're yet eating like only soybeans <laughs> as your main source of protein that may, may may have like a negative effect and it may not happen to everyone uh, some people may get it more easily than others uh, but it's not going to raise your testosterone levels so uh, it, it could have a negative effect uh, by being estrogenic but um, it may not either so just still put it into like bad I wouldn't like recommend eating a bunch of soybeans for uh, males Unless they're like fermented. If it's like natto, then the fermentation actually is uh, good. Um, but if it's you know regular ones, then uh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, hey, Stan, could you grab me a beer? There it is. Here is the uh, resistance training. <laughs> so this is what I was looking for. The resistance training weights obviously got here because one of the best ways to uh, boost your testosterone levels, uh, I'll put it actually even like number one, just, just because of how big an effect it will have on your testosterone levels. So the uh, heavy compound lifts especially have been found to have the biggest effect on um, uh, testosterone levels. And uh, yeah, other hormones as well, growth hormone, IGF-1 levels, all the growth pathways in the body go up with resistance training and so does the um, testosterone levels. Uh, testosterone levels aren't necessarily like super mandatory for building muscle, but they do have an effect on stimulating muscle protein synthesis and things like that. Uh, so you could still build muscle with low testosterone, but it's quite hard to do that and when it comes to like volumes and stuff uh, then the higher volumes tend to be more boosting of growth hormone and the testosterone compared to like powerlifting uh, or like endurance so a slightly higher bodybuilding uh, volume more sets more reps is generally uh, more accommodating of uh, testosterone levels plastics so uh, plastic bottles plastic containers those are uh, shit here <laughs> because yeah they uh have a pretty bad effect similar to being like est estrogenic uh, because of being xenoestrogens and uh, yeah one of the biggest reasons or not the biggest one but or that is one of the reasons why it's thought that uh, men have slightly lower testosterone levels nowadays is because of the exposure to these chemicals and plastics and those kind of things so uh, I would be um, I would definitely try to avoid plastics as much as possible and uh, use different kinds of containers uh, for that ginger so Ginger is also actually been found to raise testosterone levels a little bit, but it's not uh, huge. It's not huge, uh, but but it's a you know, small effect. I'll put it into okay. So just that you know, uh, I'm not making these things up. So uh, ginger has been uh, found to uh, have 
a positive effect in increasing FSH, LH, and testosterone in infertile men. Um, obviously, it's no, not healthy men or their testosterone levels were already low, uh, but it just you know shows that it is still possible to uh, have a positive effect on that. Obviously, it may not have that big an effect if you already have your good health and you already have slightly higher levels of testosterone, it's not going to be like boosting additionally, but if your testosterone levels are low or if you're infertile, then apparently, according to this study, it could have a positive effect, especially on the semen parameters of increasing uh, uh, sperm count and uh, sperm motility and uh, sperm viability, those kind of things. <laughs> Next up, we'll take uh, another common herb used for boosting testosterone, uh, which is a uh, tonkat ali, uh, and it has been um, yeah, also been found to uh, have a positive effect on uh, the uh, testosterone levels, and it is one of the few herbs that has actually like a s even like a very significant effect in boosting testosterone levels compared to things like you know tribulus terrestris or <laughs> whatever kind of test natural testosterone boosters there are. Tonkat Ali is actually one of the few ones that has been uh, shown to have quite a significant effect in raising testosterone. So I'll actually put it into God tier uh, because um, there was uh, this uh, one study: uh, total testosterone and free testosterone. Uh, baseline 3.8 for uh, nanograms per milliliter, three weeks later 4.9 and uh, five weeks later 4.42 nanograms per uh, milliliter, which is um, quite a you know, large increase, uh, but the free testosterone themselves uh, increased also quite significantly, 5.2 and 8.38 8 uh, picomol picograms per milliliter. So yeah, it's a quite a significant uh, boost in the testosterone. And uh, when it comes to the, the females, then the females uh, saw also a very significant increase. So the female participants saw a 48.6% increase in uh, total testosterone and 122% uh, increase in free testosterone. So uh, the male testosterone levels, um, the increase from that Tonka Ali wasn't that that large, but it was also quite similar. Uh, so yeah, you can also see like a double boost in your uh, free testosterone levels. And if you're interested in getting a Tonka Ali, then uh, my recommended uh, Tonka Ali supplement for boosting testosterone is by VH Nutrition. So I ha have a huge, um, like a very con highly concentrated uh, supplement that uh, has 1200 milligrams per uh, serving. So it's much larger than, um, than most other supplements. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I think something to try if you have some aspects of if you're trying to like push your natural testosterone levels to the maximum optimal range, then uh, yeah, this could be something that you uh, try out. You can also check out my discount link uh, for this uh, Tonga Dali supplement, and uh, the link is in the description. <coughs> right, next up, we'll take omega 3s, so uh, fish and DHA salmon. Uh, I think um, this is also gonna be god tier because the omega 3s uh, have been also found to be uh, positive for boosting testosterone and obviously healthy fats. They raise HDL cholesterol. Uh, which uh, there is association with higher HDL levels and uh, and the testosterone levels as well. Coffee. So the interesting thing with coffee is that uh, obviously it can raise cortisol. It can make you stressed out. It can interrupt your sleep. Um, but there is also a study that found that the uh, the co coffee or the caffeine actually has a good effect in boosting testosterone levels if you take it um, basically with exercise. So the idea may be behind that, you know, with uh, this caffeine, you have more energy to push yourself at the gym. And as a result of that, you're going to um, have a positive effect on uh, the tes testosterone levels as well as uh, through the mechanism of just training harder <laughs> and uh, heavier. So I'll just put in the okay tier. Like, I don't think that it's going to be huge in terms of boosting testosterone, uh, but again, using as a pre-workout or something, uh, then uh, at least this study, Let's say, yeah, this study does effect of caffeine on testosterone and cortisol response to resistance training. Uh, so testosterone concentrations showed a small increase of 15% during exercise. Caffeine raised this concentration in a dose-dependent manner by further small 21% at the highest dose. Uh, the 800 milligram dose also produced a moderate 52% increase in cortisol. Uh, so um, yeah, exercise raised 15% uh, uh, testosterone, but the, if you combine it with caffeine, uh, then it got up to 21%, plus or minus 24% at the highest dose. Next up, let's take sleep. I think sleep is a uh, god here because yeah, your body repairs itself uh, during uh, sleep, and uh, it also kind of produces a lot of these hormones during sleep, and sleep deprivation has been found to almost like in a dose-specific manner to uh, reduce your testosterone levels, and uh, not sleeping enough 
then uh, if, you're not, if you don't sleep, let's say for one night, then the next day your testosterone levels will be um, much uh, lower because you get more cortisol and as well, you just, your body isn't recovering. Next up, let's take uh, green tea. We talked about coffee. So green tea actually uh, lowers <laughs> testosterone. So I'll put it into bad. It's obviously not gonna be as bad as something like uh, being overweight or something, uh, but it's similar to the here that I'll put it into uh, bad. So the same applies to white teas. So green and white tea, uh, both have a suppressive effect on um, testosterone. I don't drink tea. All right, uh, steak and eggs. <laughs> so this uh, not only refers to steak and eggs, but also refers to just a higher saturated fat intake. Uh, so uh, this, I think, uh, is also gut tier, similar to the salmon, because of, yeah, your body needs cholesterol to make sex hormones, and um, a lower fat intake, like a low fat diet, has been found to reduce testosterone levels, and going back to a slightly higher saturated fat intake has been found to rebound that and uh, raise the testosterone levels back again. But there is like a, you know, a threshold as well for that. Um, you're not going to see any increase after like 30 to 40 percent of your calories coming from uh, fat. So you still want to get about like 30 to 40 percent of your calories as fat if you want to uh, maximize or optimize the uh, testosterone production. And you're not going to gain any additional benefit after that. You're not going to gain any increased effects if you eat 60% as fat. So kind of 30 to 40% is better than just 10% or 15%. Next up, uh, horny goat weed. <laughs> we have this picture of a goat and uh, the legend goes, or the myth goes that these uh, goats eat this herb and they get uh, like super horny or um, their libido increases. So that's why this herb is called a horny, hor horny goat weed. Um, it does seem to raise testosterone and uh, libido in uh, like rats and other animals, but it doesn't do so in um, in uh, humans, so uh, and it actually may have like in humans, some humans that they found to have like actually a suppressive effect on uh, testosterone, and it may be like slightly estrogenic as well in humans. So actually put it into bad here. So I wouldn't um, after seeing those studies, I wouldn't recommend to like take horny goat weed <laughs> if your goal is to kind of maximally boost your testosterone levels. Next up, we'll take uh, fasting. So uh, fasting can be. Uh, a double-edged sword as well. So uh, in um, moderation, in like time-restricted eating aspects, then uh, it has been shown to like raise luteinizing hormone and uh, testosterone levels as well a little bit. But obviously, if you over overfast, you fast for too long, then that will have a negative effect. Or if you're just you know under undernourished uh, because of the fasting, uh, so I'll put it into okay. Like I, I wouldn't consider fasting as a way to boost testosterone levels, um, but I wouldn't say that it's going to inherently be. Um, negative uh, either if you know what you're doing and if you're able to still recover optimally. The same applies to calorie restriction. Obviously you need calorie restriction to lose weight uh, but you don't want to become uh, undernourished and malnourished so I'll put this into okay as well so uh, you know it's not you know it's more bad in some sense than uh, but depends on the the amount of calorie restriction. If you're just re restricting your calories by 10 to 20 percent and you do a diet for like a few weeks then it won't have any negative effect on testosterone you may actually boost it uh, but if you're doing like a chronic calorie restriction when you can like a like a fasting mimic diet or <laughs> something like that then uh, yeah that will have a huge negative effect on uh, testosterone especially if you're restricting uh, protein and fats as well together this brings us to carbs so carbs are uh, very beneficial for um, boosting testosterone levels uh, by boosting thyroid hormones as well, and uh, low chronic low carb diets have been found to like su suppress the testosterone levels to a certain extent, and uh, you don't you you want to do cyclical carb cycling um, both males and females. It's just that the excess carbs can also be negative for testosterone if you become diabetic or if your blood sugar levels go too high. So yeah, just they uh, eat carbs in kind of moderation, and uh, do some sort of cyclical. That's what I kind of like to do, but don't be like chronically zero carb or low carb all the time either, because yeah your uh, testosterone will go down, your sex hormone binding goblin will go up. The same applies to calorie restriction that raises the sex hormone binding goblin. And uh, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, do like a very uh, <laughs> low carb diet for too long if you want to maximize your testosterone. Time to carbo load. Olive oil, uh, another form of good fats, uh, raises HDL, so I'll put it into good. Uh, because yeah, I think uh, it will raise HDL and uh, you can increase your fat intake as well. Um, yeah, I think the polyphenols may also be slightly good for like estrogen side, mm, but uh, yeah, it's not god tier because you know other things are kind of more <laughs> effective for that. But it's still good to get like some olive oil, I think. The sauna, so the sauna 
hasn't been found to uh, change testosterone levels uh, in men or or females for that matter the uh, thing with saunas is that uh, it does raise like prolactin which uh, can suppress uh, testosterone levels mm. so uh, I think uh, this will be okay because you know the saunas depends on dose and depends on frequency the heat can reduce your sperm count and uh, have a negative effect on on that uh, but it's not going to reduce the testosterone levels uh, the heat and the saunas or the prolactin even but it's still you know something um, I wouldn't say is like super testosterone boosting but it's still healthy for you for the other reasons that you get uh, sex intercourse uh, so um, this is a uh, good uh, because yeah if you are having intercourse then you will see um, an increase in testosterone levels as well as dopamine uh, the thing with the ejaculation is that after ejaculation your dopamine goes down <laughs> so and you get the increase in prolactin which can lower your testosterone um, so uh, yeah I think uh, having sex itself will raise your testosterone levels uh, but ejaculating let's say too frequently that could uh, lower your testosterone levels uh, to a certain extent when it comes to like the nofap or uh, not ejaculating then there is gonna be increase in uh, testosterone levels up to the point of day seven after and after day seven you're not gonna see any increase so um, yeah ejaculating too frequently is gonna be bad masturbation is also probably not going to raise your testosterone levels whereas intercourse with a real partner will and uh, watching someone else <laughs> like porn then uh, that uh, doesn't raise testosterone whereas the actual intercourse uh, will that's, what, that's been shown by studies so just the real thing uh, will raise your uh, testosterone but the other others the artificial <laughs> artificial uh, things that uh, don't Ashwagandha, so it's a commonly popular used uh, supplement for um, or associated with uh, like stress management and uh, testosterone levels uh, and we will put it into good because there are some uh, studies that um, the uh, Ashwagandha has a positive effect on things like uh, like um, sperm quality, semen quality and uh, some sex hormones as well although it's not again super crazy I don't I wouldn't compare it to Tongarali or I wouldn't compare it to like sunlight uh, but yeah could be something to add and the same applies to fenugreek fenugreek is actually also quite uh, commonly um, used to boost testosterone and there is uh, studies a meta-analysis even that uh, many other combination of studies have been found that the uh, the fenugreek extract has a significant effect on total serum testosterone so the uh, increase can be anywhere from like um, 15 to 17 or 20 percent increase in testosterone levels <coughs> all right we have the, some of the final ones uh, dopamine so uh, getting a boost of dopamine is very good for testosterone levels um, because dopamine does po boost testosterone levels and testosterone also helps with producing dopamine <laughs> so it's a good uh, virtuous cycle in almost and um, you get the higher motivation from dopamine and testosterone also increases like the drive and uh, those kind of things so being low dopamine uh, because of maybe watching porn or uh, not getting enough uh, amino acids or uh, not getting enough any sunlight then that would have a negative effect on uh, testosterone whereas you get dopamine from let's say even like competition winning uh, doing good in life um, getting positive feedback uh, that would raise your dopamine levels and that will also kind of raise your testosterone as a byproduct of that and last we have the uh, circadian rhythm alignment so similar to sunlight exposure so your body produces testosterone in a circadian manner the highest uh, production of testosterone is around uh, 9 a.m. in the morning and uh, misalignments in the circadian rhythms will have a negative effect on all the hormones including testosterone so I'll put being aligned with the circadian rhythms into good uh, because it is a kind of underlooked aspect and it's very important in actually uh, yeah making sure that your body produces enough of this testosterone like at the right time of the day so there you have it this is the list the best things to do for your uh, testosterone is lift weights sleep get sunlight sunlight your balls maybe <laughs> and uh, eat zinc eat uh, fatty slightly fattier foods uh, with cholesterol and uh, healthy fats uh, protein obviously as well um, maybe consider supplement with tonkadali if you want to kind of uh, maximize the natural production and uh, yeah and avoid things like VCD and uh, plastic bottles so, um, yeah that was, those are going to be the list of uh, making sure you have the best <laughs> optimal natural testosterone levels all right that's it for this video make sure you click like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. stay optimized stay empowered